Elizabeth Meek? Or Elizabeth Asanyama or Elizabeth Reclay or I Lever Ong? Whatever name you are using now. Do you remember me? Wes Stewart. Your husband's friend for over 35 years? I have come back from the dead to talk to you. I must have chewed too much petal nut last night or took too many of the narcotic pills I consume on a daily basis. You should have seen how stoned I was during Nancy Meek's deposition last year. I kept nodding off and no one said anything. Your late husband and I were friends for over 35 years and I wanted to remind you that I am surprised and disappointed with your actions in respect to Elvin Meek's trust and his children. Remember I sent you a letter outlining this and Nancy tried to submit the letter to the court as evidence. However, your attorney Jim Ashford and the judge Derek Chan would not allow my letter to be read or any of the many emails I sent so here I am. Uh, 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 what you mean? I told Nancy and Melvin Elvin's children that I am happy they are pursuing the litigation against you. Oh? His children are evil. Please. I saw Elvin as you are aware less than a week before he was hospitalized the last time. He was spacey and had difficulty concentrating. He moved from subject to subject without much connection or sense. Also, he was wearing hospital garb. Yes, I remember your visit surprised me since you came over while I was out of the Waipana condo on Iina Road in Honolulu. You will recall I had called Elvin and left several messages with no response from Elvin or from you. Oh? For a time, Elvin was calling me whenever you would leave the Waipana. Like a scared little child. He was on a lot of medications and had been in and out of the hospital. His hearing was bad. He hated his children. He didn't want me to call anyone. He was joking about Viagra. He wanted me to have everything. He? He? Stop. No more lies, Elizabeth. You never invited myself or my wife Nina over to the house while Elvin was sick. On the day of my surprise visit he was unaware I had been calling him. He was not even sure if we were in Honolulu. Or that I had stopped by a few weeks before. I don't think I would have recognized him if I had seen him on the street. Elvin had at many times discussed his estate with me and indicated his kids Nancy and Melvin would be well taken care of. When I heard otherwise I was shocked. What have you done? I cannot talk about it. You have to talk to my lawyer in California Robert Gregor Jones. He told me to talk to anyone. We all know about Gregor Jones. Elvin felt your daughter Lola was a spoiled brat. He was upset with her because of what happened with the car in San Jose. Oh? When the car he bought her was given away to one of Lola's friends. What your point? In my opinion and I have known Elvin for over 35 years. He would have dumped you two years ago had he not taken sick and become terminally Illinois. There I said it. While he was in the hospital. I told everyone Elvin's children are not involved in his life. That is a lie. Elvin loved his children. Your daughter Lola moved to Pailu in 2000 and never came back. Speaking of Micronesia. After Elvin was beaten up in 2000 on a trip with you he confided in me he would never return there. You remember when he was beaten don't you? Yes I was there. Two men beat him up and I didn't know them. Elvin was in the hospital in Palau for four days. I don't know who beat him up. I asked my brother Sanji Azanuma to lie about it when Nancy was inquiring a few years ago. You don't know who beat him up but the men didn't rob him or harm you or steal his jewelry, did they? No. You continued to make trips to Palau without Elvin, didn't you? Spending his money without his permission. He told Nancy he was going to divorce you because you were sending money to your daughter Lola Reclay in Palau. Yes, what is your point? Do you remember how you reacted the day I saw Elvin at the Waipana in Honolulu? In September of 2003, Elvin had difficulty concentrating was wearing hospital garb and after 45 minutes of trying to understand what he was saying, he was so bloated and didn't even look like himself. You walked in and as I was leaving you took me aside and desperately wanted to know what Elvin and I talked about. Why were you so concerned with what Elvin may have told me? I just wanted to know what he said. Why hadn't you called Elvin's children to tell them Elvin was sick? I don't know. 
Stop looking around for your lawyers in Hawaii from Case Shut Jim Ashford and Ron DeGriswold and even Robert Gregor Jones. They are not here to intervene for you. It is easy to go through something like this and have your lawyers lie for you, isn't it? I know speak English good. You never asked me to call Elvin's children, but you testified under oath you did. By the time I called Nancy to see how she was doing, Elvin was already in a coma. She had no idea her father was in the hospital. Elvin's children are evil. I understand you told a lot of key people that Elvin's children were bad. You went out of your way to tell the hospital staff they didn't have contact with him. Who knows what you and your attorney Robert Gregor Jones have told people. Why did you ask the managers at the Waipuna including Ralph Shumway to witness Elvin sign his last will and testament? Why didn't you ask me and Nina? We were right across the street. Like I said in my deposition, I don't know. You and your lawyer in California, Robert Gregor Jones, made changes to Elvin's estate while he was sick and dying. I have seen the first amendment your lawyer created after Elvin died. It is a sorry cut and paste job. What are you going to do when someone comes forward with the real document? No one ever will. I will not admit that attorney Robert Gregor Jones forged signatures or did a cut and paste job on the First Amendment or then I will be prosecuted. Why is that every time the name Robert Gregor Jones is mentioned I hear the bird cawing? Probably because the lawyers involved with our litigation were vultures. When Alvin handed Nancy a copy of the original 1996 trust he did not give her the First Amendment because before Alvin died it didn't exist. You were there in San Bernardino. In April of 2002 and admitted he only gave her the original 1996 trust. It would seem Robert Gregor Jones created the First Amendment after Elvin died. I don't know. Yeah, well when you gave your deposition and were on the witness stand you kept repeating those words. I don't know. I don't know. And we are supposed to believe Elvin wanted you to manage his trust? You barely speak English. Now that I am dead, your lawyers have told the court all of my affidavits prepared by Nancy's attorney, attorney Richard Deal. All of the emails and letters I composed telling everyone what happened and about Elvin's weakened condition. All of my concerns and opinions and witnessing of Elvin's condition are moot and will not be addressed in court. Yes, and nothing could make me so happy. God help you. I have the best attorney's money can buy Cades shut and the judge Derek Chan meet all the time in an expert fashion. Read the book Broken Trust. They all work together, the Bank of Hawaii all of them. I have nothing to worry about. At least that is what they have told me. I have spent close to 250000 on legal fees they better listen to me. 250000 of Elvin's hard-earned money. You worked four years in the early 80s and that is all you have worked you just became an American citizen in 2005. When you have a minute look up the word bullshit. They have your picture next to the word. Don't kid yourself. You can only hide what you have done for so long. Lady Justice may be blindfolded but people are not. Good day.